Hey folks, Captain Mikey here coming to you from beautiful North Florida. Well guys, I haven't had a lot of time out here uh, since I moved up to North Florida to really get to do too much fishing. Got the new house out here on a beautiful lake as you can see. Gorgeous lake out here. And I know it's full of fish. I just really haven't had a lot of time. We've been so busy with the new house, doing the renovations, making everything done. I apologize there hasn't been many videos. But right now, I've got probably about an hour left of sun. And I'm going to try, going to try to do a little fishing. But you know what I'm doing right now? I'm not worried about catching a big old bass. I'm not worried about trying to break a PB or trying anything, any, any specific techniques out here. I'm hungry and you've asked for it. It's time. It's time for a catch and cook, baby. That's the name of the game is catch and cook. I'm hungry and I want to catch some dinner. Oh, we got one. We got one. Guys, I got a fish. What do we got? Come on. Is this dinner? Do we got dinner? Look at that. A nice slab bluegill. Definitely going to be dinner. Oh, oh, still alive. Still kicking. That is fantastic. Look at that. Let's taste it. You know, you guys have asked me to do a lot of these catch and cooks, and I know they're really popular videos. I really enjoy them. While I love watching them all. But to be totally honest, in South Florida, I really didn't want to eat much of anything out of most of those canals. Nothing against the guys that do it down there. You're braver men than me. But up here in beautiful North Florida, I mean, this is God's country, guys. This water is absolutely clean. I'm on a spring-fed lake. I know it's full of big bass. There's crappie in here. There's bluegill in here. Shad, catfish. There's all sorts of things. So I'm going to go real simple. I got some ultralight equipment. I got some earthworms. And I got a bobber. <laughs> Let's just see what we can grab if I can catch us some dinner tonight. As I said, guys, I'm not going to go too fancy on this at all. The name of the game is catch and cook. But the most important thing to me right now is cook. I'm hungry and I want to catch some dinner. So just got a simple little long long shanked bait hook on here, small hook. Gonna throw a bobber on, throw an earthworm on, and see what we can catch. Oh yeah. Nice beautiful night crawlers. Who can say no to a dirty slimy ass worm? Now I know right out from my dock here, it's really not very deep. It's only about five feet, uh, about as far as I can cast out. So I just set this bobber to about about two feet. So let this juicy little worm just kind of dangle right out there in the middle and see who wants to come up from the bottom to eat it. Only got about an hour left of sunset, so I'm hungry. I'm hungry. It's dinner time. Let's see if something grabs this. Otherwise... We're ordering a pizza tonight. Oh, right away. Come on. He's running with it. Oh, we got one. We got one. Guys, I got a fish. We got a fish. I don't know what we got. It doesn't feel all that big. What do we got? Come on. Is this dinner? Do we got dinner? Do we got... What do we, what do we got? What do we got? We got... Oh, yeah. Big... Ow. Big, beautiful bluegill. Oh, hey, careful. Careful, don't let him in. Look at that. A nice slab bluegill. That is definitely, definitely going to be dinner. Look at that, guys. Beautiful. Beautiful. How about bluegill for dinner? Sounds good to me. Sounds very good to me. Got a little bucket over here. And I'm going to put him in. Put him in here for now. Right on. Let's go get another one. That's like one sandwich. We need more than that. Got to feed the wife, too. Right away. Instantly. Instantly. Oh, that bobber's under. We got him. We're on. We got a fish, guys. What do we got this time? What kind of delicious, yummy little pan fish we got? We got another big bluegill. Beautiful. Another good eater. Another nice slab bluegill. Getting real dark, guys, but look, we got another one. We got another one. Nice size one here, too. Yep. There we go. I 
that's the best one yet. Nice big slab. Gotta love it, guys. That's it. That is definitely a meal. We got four of these beautiful, big, beautiful bluegills. They're gorgeous. It's time to eat. Just in time for the final sunset. Yeah, buddy. Well, guys, we got our four great, big, beautiful bluegill. We're about to clean them up. Fresh out of North Florida's clean, clean water here. We know they're fr as fresh as they can be. They're still flopping around a little bit. Oh, oh still alive. Still kicking. Going to clean these up. And we're going to do something a little different than most traditional catch and cooks here, guys. What, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to do my favorite recipe. And it's a blue bluegill scampi. That's right. We're going to cook these up scampi style. A lot of you people out there, you know, not, not so certain if you like to eat freshwater fish. Freshwater fish is fantastic, but I'm going to prove to you guys today that it can be cooked up a whole different bunch of different ways, and it's going to be absolutely amazing. So we're going to do some bluegill scampi with these beautiful slab bluegill that I pulled up out of the lake here. Women are definitely attracted to us fishermen. We already know that, but there's no better way to impress a woman than prove to her that you know how to cook. We're going to, I'm going to show you guys my secret recipe for scampi bluegill here, and it's bound to impress just about everybody. Absolutely delicious. Let's get these bad bad boys cleaned up first All right guys here we go What we're gonna do to these beautiful bluegill is we're gonna fillet them up a lot of guys like to eat them with the skin on them Still certain other ways and they're all fantastic But for this recipe, we're gonna want some nice clean fillets when you're filleting a bluegill It's actually I'm gonna show you a couple of neat little tricks, but as you can see these are blue or bull bluegill so they've got a giant head to them up here. There's a lot of great meat up in this section here. And of course the stomach here is, is, is nothing good. Try to get as much of that beautiful head meat as you can there. And just come on down right, right behind the gill. Give it a nice slice right through. And you're going to want to go right down to where you feel the backbone. Once you pass those bones, try to slide that knife again. Make sure you're right on that backbone. Slide the knife right through. And we're going to cut right across, feeling along that backbone. But don't cut through the backbone. And rather than cutting all the way through, we're going to stop right at the end of the tail there. Okay, It's just going to make it a lot easier when we actually go to fillet. Now take your knife, find those those rib bones, and just trace right along them. There we go. We followed along those rib bones. All the rib bones are there. There's nothing left in this small fillet here. As I said, we left this attached for a reason here, guys. It gives it uh, something to hold on to when you actually go to fillet to remove the skin. And by doing that, just cut down until you get to the skin. And try to slide your knife right along inside. Not as flat as you can. Try not to cut. If you're too much of an angle, you're going to cut through the skin. You don't want to do that. Keep that knife nice and flat, holding on to the tail still so it holds on to it for you. And slide that knife right along. There we go. Beautiful skinning job. And there's your first fillet. And there is a beautiful bone-free bluegill fillet. It's a very nice white meat, not a lot of veins into it. Got a nice texture to it, but not too, not too tough, not too tender. Really nice, beautiful white fillet. A little bucket of water here. We're just going to drop those fillets in as I got them. And try to repeat the same thing on the other side.
drop it in the water. There we go. I'll spare you guys the time of watching me clean the other four fish, the other three fish here. Once you're done with each one, that's what you have. Two beautiful fillets. Well, there we go. Got all four of our beautiful bluegill all filleted up. The fillets are soaking in water here. Clean up. But here it is, guys. A very, very simple recipe that is absolute dynamite. And you can do this with just about anything, but today it's bluegill. Bluegill scampi. Very simple recipe here, guys. You need very few ingredients, and chances are you got most of these sitting around at home already. All you need, of course, angel hair pasta or any kind of pasta. That's the final step, of course. We're going to serve this over top of pasta. Italian seasoning. You can, If you don't have it, you can pick it up at any, any grocery store. It's everywhere. Two sticks of butter. Two lemons. Some minced garlic or any kind of fresh garlic will work as well, of course. And salt and pepper salt and pepper and that's it guys those are all the ingredients to make an absolutely fantastic dinner this catch and cook is going to be on fire guys we're scamping up some bluegill so that's it guys those are all the ingredients that you need to make this amazing meal now that we showed you how to clean the fish we showed you the ingredients let's put it all together and get going because i am hungry step one preheat that oven baby Preheat it to 400 degrees. Two sticks of butter in a bowl. Drop your two sticks of butter in the microwave. Melt those sticks of butter. Gonna boil up some water and cook your pasta in. All right, we got the melted butter. Take a nice greased baking pan. Now you can grease this up with whatever you want. You can grease it up with butter, with spray, anything you want. I just used a little bit of oil here. And what we're gonna do, you're gonna take these lovely fillets we got here, and we're just gonna lay them out inside. Try to shake off as much of that excess water as you can. All right, now that you got your fillets all organized here, you're just gonna season them up. It's pretty simple, guys. A little salt, a little pepper, Italian seasoning. Just try to make sure you spread it nice and evenly over top of everything. Everything gets a little taste of love. Little love for you, little love for you. And this is to taste, guys, absolutely. I like this little zip, I like pepper. And then your last but not least, your Italian seasoning. Boom. Looks delicious already. The next step here, real simple there. Take your lemons, cut them in half, guys. We got our melted butter. You're going to want to squeeze your lemons into the melted butter. Real simple, easy little trick for you guys that are not sure what you're doing. You want to make sure you don't get the seeds in there. Squeeze your lemons upside down. Give them a good squeeze like this and then tilt it. That'll kind of keep those seeds inside the lemon, but you still get all the juice in there. Oh, yeah. All right, now once you got those lemons all squeezed in there, the next step is the garlic. Minced garlic is probably the easiest way to go when you're using this here. You're going to take a spoon, and you're going to want... Garlic is to taste, guys. I like things a little zip. I like things a little garlicky. So a little more garlic, but I'm going to put two to three... Large spoonfuls of minced garlic. That's entirely up to you. If you go going on a date, maybe just put two in there. And just stir all that up nice and good. Get it all mixed up together. Oh yeah, this is going to be awesome. I got a lemon in my gut. Oh! Alright, the next step, your mixture of butter, lemon, and garlic. And we're just going to try to slowly pour it over top of all those beautiful fillets. Try to make sure each one gets some love. And pour in the middle of the pan there. Even better. Just want to make sure you kind of spread that garlic around a little bit, guys. If you have any of that garlic actually sitting out above, uh, exposed to the air like that, it'll actually burn when you're putting it in the oven. And you don't want that. Nobody likes burned garlic. Very next step, nice and simple. We're going to put these fillets in the preheated oven. We preheated it to 400 degrees. Now, an important thing to remember here is bluegill are very tiny little fillets, and they do vary quite a bit here. So they're going to cook pretty fast. If you're cooking a more robust fish or larger fillets, it may take a little longer. Uh, this is probably going to be anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes to cook these, but you're going to want to check it every five minutes just to be safe. Just to see how quickly these actually do cook. Get them in that oven. Wait about five minutes to check them out. 
Looking good. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, that's done. Now guys, these were in for about 15 minutes in total. And that is fantastic. Look at that. Just a little bit of work. Don't fry it, don't waste it. Put a little bit of extra love in it and you'll impress everybody. Super, super tender white meat. These fillets look fantastic. The fish is well cooked perfectly. And it flakes, you know it's done right when it flakes up easily. And that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna kinda break it up into nice little chunks. So we can spread it out nice and evenly over our pasta. Look at that guys. That is perfection. Just have them nice and broken up like that. Guys, we've already cooked our pasta on the side while that was being done. We got the pasta over here. And what you're gonna do, just grab a whole bunch of that pasta, drop it right in that whole mixture. All that butter, all that lemon, all that garlic is making that beautiful, beautiful sauce. Get that all stirred up and mixed in there. Look at that. Tell me you like fried fish. I like fried fish too guys, but just spend a little extra time and now you have yourself a fantastic gourmet meal. And boom, there it is guys. Look at that fantastic masterpiece and that took all of about 10 minutes of preparation and 15 minutes of cooking time. Unbelievable bluegill scampi a la Captain Mikey. And look at that flaky white meat in there. You really want to impress somebody, don't just fry up a fish. Spend a little time, add some extra love, and do something pretty fantastic. That bluegill is cooked to perfection, guys. Looks amazing. Cooked it up, bluegill scampi style. One last thing to do, enjoy it. Let's taste it. That is fantastic. The bluegill itself got a great texture to it. Very nice and flaky white meat to it. But... Even with all the extra seasonings we got, I can still taste a little bit of the fish. It is an excellent fish, guys. If you haven't tried bluegill yet, give it a shot. And do something a little different, guys. Cook it up scampi style. This is unbelievable. Mm. Heaven. Absolutely delicious. Try something a little different. Don't just fry it up. Spend a little time. Add a little love. And guys, I hope you learned a little something and you can impress somebody with a recipe just like this. If you have a recipe like this yourself that you'd like to see me try, go ahead, leave it down in the comments, send it to me. If you think I've done something a little wrong here or you have an improvement on this personal recipe, leave a comment for me and stay tuned because I'm going to have plenty more of these catching cooks with a little twist coming to you. Wow. Unbelievable. Well, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned a little something. And like I said, don't be afraid to try something a little different. You never know who you're going to impress with it. Bluegill Scampi Style, a la Captain Mikey. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you did learn a little something. If you did, make sure you smash the heck out of that like button. And leave a comment on anything else you'd like to see me film out here. I'll do my very best to make a video on each and every one of those guys. But most importantly, subscribe to that channel. And if you're already subscribed, well, stay subscribed, guys, because there's plenty more coming in Sawgrass Bass this future. One last time from beautiful North Florida, eating up some delicious fresh bluegill. It's Captain Mikey signing out. The future is bright. You keep those lines tight.